And uh, uh, when you have a track of, of a stream of people coming through, you can't set expectations like this where you've got to bring in chocolate, so it looks bad for the rest of the gang. Well, so um, my talk's actually not about MOOCs, and I got put in a MOOC session, so my esteemed colleague, Dragan Gasevich, noted that to me and said, I'm an odd cast, and I said, thank you very much, mate. makes me feel very confident about presenting here. So I'm going to try and weave in the word MOOC and try and see if I can pass that by you and see if it actually works. But... Uh, all due thanks to Nega Murari. This is really her idea and her study, and unfortunately she couldn't make it, um, so I'm the poor economy version of a business class flight to actually give you a, a presentation. Um, what we're looking at is the pairing of lecture recording data and what it actually means beyond um, student predicting student performance, which in this case, but also feedback to our academic staff about how they're going and the alignment of assessment uh, tasks with their uh, recording material. I'd really like to, and you'll notice I've really jumped straight into the Flemish culture. I hope I got that right. Um, Alan Kingston, Department of Psychology at UBC, the tool that we used was really uh, his initiation. He's uh, a very, very bright chap. Uh, John Bratlin, Thomas Danger did a lot of the, um, the coding for the tool as well. So the overview, I'm going to try and talk about video production, just so that's the only spot I could work in the word MOOC. Um, and then I'm going to critique it extensively for at least one, two minutes. Um, and then talk about our tool class, a bit of a pilot study, the results and future directions of what we've got. Literally, around videos and MOOCs, um, we have two types. We have the, uh, the Salman Khan version that's gained a lot of popularity, and also the sort of the talking head and PowerPoint version that sort of interplay between the two. Uh, they're, they're, I think Chris Brooks yesterday, uh, no, Monday, actually said a, a great version is that we're really interested in scale, not quality, and I think uh, his version was you can actually use a security camera to actually capture some of this material. Um, this morning when we are in um, Marsha Lovett's keynote, I actually noticed, and you know who you are if you're illegally uh, taking videos of people, um, had, a, had one set up, I won't point out fingers in the room, but uh, George, seniors, um, <laughs> had this set up. No, he didn't, just in there. So what's missing, though, in the MOOCs? I mean, they're great in terms of one pedagogical model of transmissive. You know, let's hammer kids with content, let's, we can work in the quizzes and let's test them on that content knowledge. But there is a social element that's missing there, and it's tried to brought in, it's kind of brought in through the discussion forum activity. But one of the big problems there with that is um, you get a lot of forum activity, not per individual, but just because of the sheer size of them. Even in a large class where you've got a 1,000 kiddies running around um, in, in your classroom in a lecture, you still get a lot of forum posts, and it's very difficult then to actually sort them from a user perspective to form groups to actually have a social conversation in there. So the trend is generally that kids will make a new post, even though they may have asked a question that was similar, that was on page one. They don't necessarily scroll through to page 58 to see what the, the latest version was there. So with that in mind, um, Alan Kingston started to look at a tool uh, um, which he called the Collaborative Lecture Annotation System, and it's a web-based video annotation tool and really was around highlighting areas of importance that happen literally in a lecture um, and try and make it for the user and a little bit more um, engaging and a little bit more collaborative. So in essence, what the tool does is, as students are watching a video, and this can be live as well, they literally just hit a button and it becomes an important point to them. That's what was of importance. It's something that happened in, at that particular t time that they perceived as being important. Here's a, a sort of a screen grab of it. You'll notice that uh, we've got a, a, an annotation button. It's really low cognitive load. Um, just click it. It will give you one of the little orange flags, uh, point at a specific time point, which then students can write some notes about it. You'll note um, the, there's an annotation type because uh, we're building in other than just text. There's also video, which has been released. Um, but there might be other areas around. It might be a link into a Wikipedia page. It might be audio. It might be anything else, a slap, if, if people weren't paying attention. There is a, a private option, so these are annotations that uh, the, the user just wants to reflect on themselves, but they're always accessible by the instructor. Um, the nice thing about it, and you have to pull George in, um, good looking guy, that's the only reason for it, it's eye candy for everyone to maintain their attention, is the nice thing is when you get lots of students um, entering in the annotations, you actually see areas of convergence. So where they thought there were particular points and where they make an annotation, you see lots of areas of convergence. But interestingly, you also see areas of divergence. And from an instructor's point of view, is that where do we actually want to dip in here? What, were the, you know, what was the point at which they're all converged on? Yes, that was the, 
important area that I was talking about, Stanley Milgram, six degrees of separation and so on, these experiments. But over here I notice there's a group of students that uh, have missed that point or they're annotating about something else that may be questions, maybe something else, and we'll work into the, the colour coding there. Here's a couple of uses of, of the tool at the moment. Um, this is a, a band at UBC, and again, they, all the individuals were asked to just comment on, on, reflect on the band's performance, and they all hit particular points in time, and they all write very similar things. It's, it's nice to scroll through, through the, uh, their annotations. Throw privacy straight out the window. I'm reading everything. Um, the other one is a, a case study we've been using is uh, the use of class in, in the medical profession. So um, it's very hard to describe to a student when they're preparing for their OSCE examinations you know, or clinical practitioner aspects, uh, how they might interview a patient, and they often do this together, students will practice together. Someone will review that, can watch that video, but it's very hard to write and say, you know, don't swing your arm up like that because you'll break it. Um, you need to rotate it around in this way, and that way you can test for the whatever this is called. You can tell I've spent a long time in the medical profession. But uh, other, it's much easier to do that on a video. And the students can embed that, they can click on it and they can see it straight away what the, the practitioner, and also speeds things up, which I think aligns with some of the work that Phil Long's done in giving audio assessment. Um, there with the tool he's released where he's uh, see it. This is the one that we looked at, um, largely because we've got another good looking guy, but he was in political science, he was keen and he was engaged, and we wanted to see how the tool could be used in a more of a blended format. So. Um, the analytic features of, of class, what we're pulling out, um, we have uh, views, obviously, um, the view duration, um, and we also have sort of about the annotation length, numbers, and word counts, and so on. But we're also moving into scrubbing, so where the students actually rewind and review, um, having a look at that. Because it's a social element, we actually want to see who are the students that share, what sort of... Re two minutes. Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, too many jokes. Um, and the similarity index around the convergence and divergence. So basically what we wanted to do was really quickly see a, a trend, uh, see if there was any indication of students' use of the tool and the way that may manifest through their assessment scores. And secondly, whether those, the use of the tool was an indication of the alignment between the assessment and the content delivered. So we took, uh, we asked 133 students, completed short answer assessment tasks, three recordings per assessment. And the first time we found out that yes, Yahoo, we had a significant po positive correlation. The greater the viewing time, the greater the academic performance. Our kids were ecstatic. Um, we were ecstatic. We looked for schlumps. Um, we had a lead indicator of student performance, confirmation for the instructor that everything was going well in terms of their alignment. But when we dr dug a little deeper, there was one randomly generated question. So there were a group of four questions, and it was each student random out of those four, um, based on one of the three recordings um, would have to answer. And we found that in this case, no, there wasn't any alignment whatsoever. So I had a chat with the instructor and said, look, yes, question three was good because it came from recording one. Students who watch recording one generally got it right, but the rest were all mixed. We uh, then leapt in to repeat the process on another four or five recordings, four, five, and six, and another set of uh, uh, quizzes. Uh, and we actually saw the same trend in terms of the overall viewing time and assessment performance. But this time with the discussion of the academic and, and based on the information before, he was able to go back and align those questions much more clearly and we got a, a much solid pattern, only question four in this case, there was no correlation. So basically it's very simple, breaking it up. If we have kids watching a video and they get the question right, so Yahoo, this is the goal we're all after. If they don't watch the video but they get the questions right, okay, we're dealing with a group of Einsteins. If the kids um, don't watch the video and they get it wrong, okay, this is a little bit more problematic. Um, how do we actually get them? They're not engaged full stop, uh, your, your group at the start. Um, you're out. And, but if they're watching the video and not getting them right, this is where we want to go back and have a look at the alignment between the content and the assessment. This is the important quadrant right here. Um, in essence, very encouraging. We want to go back onto this further. And the next steps for us are really to look at the investigation of the annotation types, social network analysis, sense making. Those scrubbing patterns, I think, are going to be really critical. Um, and then models of applications of the tool through re reflective practice, mobile learning, collaborative professional practice, and so on. And we will have a study coming up very soon around self-regulated learning and the interactions and how we can do this as an assessment of self-efficacy and, so and motivation. Thank you very much for your time.
We have time for a few questions uh, since I made him rush, rush, rush through the last part of it. Are there any questions for, uh, for Shane? Vanna White will be with you shortly. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, one clarification question and then uh, just a, a different not clarification question, I guess. Um, so can students annotate the annotations, sort of reply to annotations other people have made, see the annotations other people can made, make? At the, at the moment, they can't. Okay. So they, um, but they have a general summary area, which I didn't highlight, and they can in there. So oh. as, but specific to one annotation to another. Mm -hmm. But that, that's going to come into future generations. And, so. and, and the reason I thought of that is the uh, NB project at MIT, where they allow you to annotate not on videos, but on um, some sort of a text passage. And it's all collaborative, and then the teacher can scan through, and they get a heat map of the hot spots, just like you had with the videos. And so there's a probably some good opportunities for collaboration there. Yes, there is. Thank you very much.